the Jacoby Iteration Method. So what is the Jacoby Iteration Method? So far, we've been solving AX equal B with what I would call direct methods, where we go in, we do a bunch of algebra, and out comes the answer. Now, as the matrix size grows, that kind of solution becomes very inefficient. And it's particularly inefficient. Suppose we have a good guess of what the answer is. We could, in principle, somehow use that information to shortcut our way to the final answer. And it turns out iterative methods can do this. They can take an initial guess and iteratively refine that to make that better and better. And clearly, the better that first guess is, the quicker that iterative algorithm will converge to the answer. So this Jacobi iteration method, it turns out it has one sensitivity to it. Our matrices have to be something called diagonally dominant. And the algorithm is very picky about this. If we do not have a diagonally dominant matrix, it very likely will explode. So what is a diagonally dominant matrix? Well, what we have to do is check the magnitude of the diagonal element in each row and make sure that, that it's larger than the sum of the magnitude of all the other elements in that row. And so here's an equation describing that. We take the diagonal element in the ith row, look at the magnitude, we're throwing out signs. Then we take every other element in that row except the diagonal element, take the absolute value and add them all up. We need the diagonal element to be that big or greater, and that's called diagonally dominant. So to take this home, let's look at some examples. Here's a matrix, one, two, three, four. Is that a diagonally dominant matrix? The answer is no. And that's simply because the, in the first row, our diagonal element one is actually less than two. So that's not diagonally dominant. Here's a new matrix. Is this diagonally dominant? This is not diagonally dominant because of the second row. We have a one in this position and that's less than seven over here. How about this matrix? Is this a diagonally dominant matrix? It turns out that is a diagonally dominant matrix. So in our minds, throw out all the negative signs. And what we can see is four is definitely greater than two plus one or three. Three is definitely greater than one plus one, which is two. And over here, eight is definitely greater than two plus three, which is five. So we have a diagonally dominant matrix and a matrix like that could be solved with Jacobi iteration. One last example, is this diagonally dominant? And it's no. And that's because two is not greater than one plus two, which is three. Likewise, in this row, eight is not greater than four plus five, which is nine. So that is not a diagonally dominant matrix and Jacobi iteration probably could not be applied to that. Let's formulate the Jacobi iteration. And we're going to do this two ways. The first will be purely algebraic. And then the second one will come up with a matrix equation. So we're working with matrices instead of the individual terms. So here's our matrix problem that we would like to solve with Jacobi iteration. The first thing we'll do is jump out of matrix form and write this matrix equation as three separate linear algebra equations. Now from there, what we're going to do is go each row at a time, solve the first row for X1, solve the second row for X2, and solve the third row for X3. And that's where we end up. So we have these three equations solved for x1, x2, and x3. And it turns out these are going to be the equations that we iterate to improve our guess at x1, x2, x3, every iteration. So here's how we would implement that. Well, we start with the problem. We need our ax equals b. x is what we're trying to find, so we need a and b to begin with. We then come up with an initial guess, and the better we can do that, the better off we'll be. Now we go into our iteration. So we have this initial guess. The first thing we're going to do 
is go through these three equations to calculate better values for x1, x2, and x3. Once we do that, we're going to compare what we've just calculated to the previous iteration. And of course, we'll normalize that to our x value. So we really kind of have percent errors here. So we have an error for x1, an error for x2, an error for x3. And we might add them up. We might look at the largest one, but we're going to iterate until all of those errors are sufficiently small, and then we'll have our answer. That's it. Let's look at how to do this with matrices so we don't have these large algebraic equations. The first thing we'll do is we'll look at the equations that we're iterating. Same equations, we're just going to write them slightly differently. So we have this one over A11, and then what was in the numerator we're writing over here. And looking at this form, and maybe this takes some practice, but somebody as crazy as me that's been doing this long enough, I can look at those and actually write a matrix equation. So I'm looking at the left, I see my X values. So that's a column vector of X's. I then see the diagonal elements of A, one over the diagonal elements of A. So what I'm gonna do is, okay, if we have this operation diag A, we're gonna form a new matrix that essentially just pulls out the diagonal. And MATLAB has a command diag that actually does that. So we're gonna take the diagonal out of A and invert that. That's our next matrix. Then we're gonna multiply a bunch of other stuff, which I'm reading off of here. The next thing I'm looking at is all of the Bs. This is a column vector, so we have our column vector of Bs. Now we have what looks like A times X, right? But it's missing a term in each one. It's missing the diagonal element. We see no A11 times X1 here. We see no A22 times X2. And down here, we see no A33 times X3. So this is kind of like A times X, but without the diagonal element. So we'll take A, we'll subtract the diagonal of it and put that in parentheses. So that's our new A without the diagonal and multiply that by X. So this is a new matrix equation and we don't have to have, we don't have to track all of these separate equations. And this is really valid for any number of equations. Our matrix might be 10,000 by 10,000. Let's keep going. For simplicity, let's not keep writing diag of A. Let's just call that D. So we'll remember D is a diagonal matrix, which is the center diagonal of A. So that means the equation we derived on the previous slide is inverse of D times all this stuff. So column vector B minus, and then in parentheses, A minus D, that stuff in parentheses times column vector A. So this is our X from a, our current iteration. And from all this, we calculate X at the next iteration. We're going to do some algebra on this to put it in a slightly different form. The first thing we'll do is just multiply everything out. We got a bunch of stuff to multiply out. We have uh, you know, what's in parentheses here with this X, and then we have this D inverse. We're gonna multiply everything out, and that's where we end up. And we can simplify this a little bit. We see a D inverse D, right? That's the identity matrix, and identity matrix times column vector X, that's just column vector X. So we can write this as just that column vector X plus everything else. So we simplified everything else down to a, a smaller term. We still have one of our X's left, so that's okay. We just leave that there. That, that came from here. So here's our new form of the equation. Now, it turns out, so column vector X at iteration I plus one is going to equal this. And we can look at this and interpret that a little bit physically. So this first term is the X from the previous iteration, which means whatever's left over is the improvement on X. And that's very useful because we can calculate this improvement, right? And then we can look at the magnitude of that improvement to determine if our iterations have converged. If that improvement becomes sufficiently small, we can say that we're done. So here's the algorithm of the Jacobi method. So we start with, of course, A and B, that's the matrix problem we're trying to solve, and a good guess. And if we don't have a good guess, maybe we just put random numbers in here or whatever, but hopefully we have a good guess. Step one, we will pull the diagonal out of A and just call that D. Now we enter our 
our loop. And the first thing we'll do is we'll check if we're done. And of course, we're not done because we just started. So let's go on. The first thing I'll do is calculate the adjustment. This is how much we have to change our current guess at X to improve it. Then we'll go ahead and prove it. We'll add in that delta X to the previous X to get the new X. But having calculated delta X separately, that lets us check for convergence. We'll take those delta X's, divide by our X's, so we're essentially normalizing it to get percent error. And we'll look at the maximum one, the biggest jump, and we'll call that the error. And that's what we'll check. When that maximum error for all the variables we're trying to find falls below some tolerance, we'll say that we're finished. And that's it. That's the Jacobi method. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.